All right. Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the East Coast version of the system review for uh, U.S. Rowing's Junior National Team System. Uh, my name is Chris Chase, and I am the Director of Sports Development for U.S. Rowing. And my partner in crime here is Rosa Kemp, and Rosa is the Associate for the Sports Development Department. And Rosa, let me turn it over to you real quick, and we'll get yeah. things going. Sure. Thank you, and welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining us this evening. Um, I'm sure you've received at least one email from me, if not more, um, over the years. <laughs> but um, we just wanted to start this off with a really simple poll question. So once I launch it, you'll see it pop up on your screen. If you're in the car or some environment where you can't answer, do not worry about it. Uh, we're just trying to get a gauge for our audience tonight, and it might help us tailor how much detail we go into on certain topics. So I'm going to go ahead and launch it. It is anonymous, so, you know, don't worry about that. Um, we'll be able to see the results after. Okay, great. Looks like a pretty good split, actually. Just wait for a couple more people. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and, oh, a couple more came through. All right, I'm going to go ahead and end the poll. And it will, on the screen, it should show you kind of, you know, where we're at. It looks like a pretty good mix between people who only just heard about our summer camps and then people who are more familiar with the process. So um, I think that was about to be expected. Um, and hopefully we're, we're able to answer maybe some of the questions you've had uh, along the way. So I'll give it back to you, Chris. All right, thanks, Rosa. Um, it, we're going to cover a lot of material tonight. And so what we'd like to do is have the questions at the end. So if you have questions, uh, we are going to make time at the end, but we wanna make sure that we're respectful of your time. And we have to do the West Coast one after this. So we'd like to get through all the information first. And there's probably a good chance that your question will be answered as we go through it anyways. So uh, thanks for your patience in advance. And Rosa, why don't we get started on PowerPoint? All right, so obviously we're here to talk about our summer camps for the summer 2023 and um, and all the things that go with it. So uh, as you may or may not know, we have some new changes this year. We have a new director of high performance for U.S. Rowing, and with the new director uh, came some changes to the program from top to bottom. And the first change is the usage of Olympic Development Program, what we used to call ODP was generally referred to one level of the camp. And we're going to use it a little bit more proper now as the, the umbrella that covers all levels of the junior national team from juniors through the Olympic movement. So there's many layers to that. And the ODP is going to be, is going to be something that we use to refer to all of it. Um, and so if you're, if you're wondering why, uh, you know, we sort of pigeonhole hold ourselves with the use of ODP in the past, uh, especially when it was just for a junior level of camp and we just figured that it limited us and um, it didn't support what our intention was and that was for the whole system to be a pathway for athletes at every level no matter where they were in their development for us to help them reach their dreams and hopefully go out there and find some uh, some of the next olympians um odp goals will align with the broader mission of u.s rowing's high performance under under eoc how does this impact our summer camps well, the process is going to change. The organization of, of that process is going to change. But at the, at the end of the day, it's the same goal that we have, and that is to support development and the junior national team. Okay, so what is the Olympic Development Program? Well, the USOPC coined the phrase, and if you were an Olympic sport, the U, you probably have come across this in soccer or volleyball or any of the other Olympic sports. Most sports have an Olympic development program. For us, it's a multi-phased approach to identify talented athletes at different ages 
and help them uh, reach their potential. And if that means making a national team or becoming an Olympian, even better, because that's what they, that's the whole goal of it all. It's a system that provides these athletes with challenging yet developmentally appropriate opportunities that support their current and future goals. And I think this is a big one because, you know, I think in America, we always want to cut corners and we always want to go faster and get there, get to the end quicker. Uh, you know, this program is designed to help people where they're at, meet the athletes where they're at, and provide them the resources and the opportunities to improve where they're at so that they can have a, a much longer trajectory uh, over time. You know, it, it, we'd love to keep people in the system as long as we can and as long as they want to be uh, there and help them develop along that pathway. And a lot of these principles come out of the American developmental model, which is a long-term athlete development. Um, these are the things that uh, are important with the USOPC. Obviously, their goal is to help athletes stay in sports for a much longer time. And um, I think with all sports, as they start to grow, they start coming into to the challenges of burnout and overuse injury and so on. And this program is designed to help at each stage mitigate those challenges. Uh, Rosie, before we move on, we should introduce Sean. Sean, welcome. Sean McCourt has been involved in running camps uh, with us for a while now. And Sean McCourt and his wife, Megan, will be running the uh, youth development camps, which in the past have been called ODP camps. Sean will be running those with his wife down in Chattanooga. And so he's here. And Sean, what I told everybody is what we'll answer questions at the end. So we can okay. get through the, the, the material. But um, if you have questions about YDC, which youth development camp, YDC is the short part uh, of it, um, we can ask Sean at the end. Thank you, Rosa. All right, so uh, this pyramid here is a representative of the junior system uh, at, the, at the base, which supports everything above it is the youth development camp. And as we said this year, uh, that will be hosted in Chattanooga. The next layer of camps is selection development camp. Uh, we will have um, this camp is a four week camp with the ending of camp being at youth, or uh, I'm sorry, uh, summer club nationals. I should note that the youth development camp this year, we have had some evolutions. And um, one of them is, is that we've made this camp a two week camp. In the past, it's been a month. And one of the things that we thought is if, if we shortened it, several things would happen. Number one, it would be more accessible. It would be uh, certainly cheaper. Um, number two, it would allow you to not dig into too much of your home programs time so that if you still wanted to go to club nationals, you could, you wouldn't be gone for very long and you could represent your home club at club nationals in the summer if you chose to, or Canadian Henley, or whatever it is that your club does. So we thought that a two week camp would provide us with the opportunity to develop athletes, but also not get in the way of what you might be doing at home. Uh, and then the top of the pyramid, obviously, is a selection camp. And what you'll see here is uh, this camp, if you get invited to it, then you are going to race at a high performance level internationally for the United States. Um, this, this camp is broken down into two parts. One is the world's team that goes to the junior world championships. And the other is the Canamex team that this year is hosted in uh, Mexico. So uh, Mexico are the hosts this year. Canamex is Canada, America, and Mexico. And that is an attempt for us to get some international racing experience for our kids before they may or may not go on to Worlds at a later, later date. <clears throat> All right. So what are the different camps? The highest performing athletes in the U.S. that are U19, which is the, the rule for world rowing, um, are prepared and mature enough to train to compete at a world-class level. So this group right here, as I said earlier, will be broken into two groups. They will represent the U.S. at one of two places, uh, and they will be racing international competition. The level beneath that is selection development camp. These are our pre-elites. These are the kids that are the athletes that are close, but just off the pace and a little more seasoning. And, um, and we hope that they become uh, later on to go on and represent the United States uh, internationally. So what we do with, with this group here is we will do a lot of small boat rowing, a lot of uh, it'll be a lot more intensity and they will end the one month training camp and they will go to youth or uh, I keep saying youth uh, club nationals and they will re uh, represent the system at club nationals this year that's in Lake Harsha right near Cincinnati and then the base of the pyramid that supports everything is our youth development camp and this is the camp uh, that we will 
we will find athletes that show promise that have an early interest and early promise in the sport. Um, things, uh, these are people that, these are young athletes that we think might have a future and that if we can help develop them, that's what we intend to do. And this is a two week camp that, you, that will be hosted in Chattanooga. I should say, Rose, that haven't said this yet, selection development camp this year is um, slated to be at Dayton University in Ohio. And that makes it quite convenient for us because that's about an hour and 10 minutes away from Lake Harsha. So it makes our commute to racing much easier and uh, a lot less expensive this year. Okay, so this is, I think this is a really important slide right here. And you know, everybody wants an exact way to make this and a way to make that. And I think it, it needs to be said repeatedly that there is no one thing that's going to guarantee you access to a camp or doom you from making a camp. Um, it's a combination, right? I mean, there are things you can't teach. I can't teach somebody to be taller, right? I can't coach them up to be taller or stronger or all of that. But what we can do is we can find a combination and find our best athletes. And that, and I mean, ob the obvious is, right, your birthday. You, have, you can't turn 19 this year, this calendar year, and still compete at at Worlds or compete at Canamex. Um, you know, so eligibility is based on a lot of things, fitness, physical attributes, uh, technical ability, that's why we ask for video. Um, there are some kids who might not spin the yard but are amazing on the water. So your national level race results are important to us. Maybe you just kill it in the single, you just, the urge's not your best friend. We're, we're looking for athletes that we can further along the, the pathway. This is a pipeline, and we hope that we're providing athletes at all levels of this pathway um, in the future. All right, so we'll give you a second to take this in. Um, obviously, you probably have seen this before if you've been to an ID camp because you're getting some of these emails from Rosa. Um, this has a lot of information on it. It basically tells you how large each of the camps are. And we've made an effort this year to make them a little smaller so that we can get more uh, coaching time. It tells you, you, know, you know, roughly what the age, athlete age is, uh, the general 2K targets for each of the levels of camp, where they're located, and the length of the camp and the dates that they start and finish apply to. So we'll let you have a look at that for a quick sec. As you're looking through the numbers, I mean, right now, Rosa, what are we about? 920 kids have, have signed up or uh, attending um, ID camps. So yeah. the ID camps are really important in the new system. Uh, the new system, it gives, ID camps are going to give us a chance for you. To, it's sort of like an audition. We get to see where you're at. Um, and later on, we'll talk about the JOT form. But the JOT form is equally as important because we all know that from January till June, you're going to improve. You're going to grow. Uh, you might want to change some of your your information as you improve and get better. And so we're going to encourage you throughout this to continue to go to the job form when you feel like there's something big. You maybe had a huge PR and you want us to know. And that's the kind of stuff that you can put in that job form. It probably leads us right into the next slide, doesn't it? Because mm -hmm. um, I think the next one is yes. So here we have the ERG, uh, the ERG submission um, requirements. Now, let, let me point out that the 6K and the 2K are, are very important for the national team high performance athletes. You know, this is something that Yossi has required at all levels. And what we're trying to do is align the high performance part of rowing so that whether it's juniors, U23, or senior athletes, they have a similar experience and a similar set of expectations. And it's important that if we keep that consistent, then the athletes understand what is expected out of them. And they also, if we can get into the rhythm of when you're going to submit your times and what those times and what the metrics are, then that's pretty important uh, for the athletes to, to understand. Um, Rosa, did you want to jump in here real quick? Yeah, perfect. You're on my mind. Um, so I think the, the important part on this slide, especially, is that it's highlighting the fact that athletes who are interested in or possibly wanting to attend selection camp, right, the tippy top of the pyramid, you have to understand that there are additional requirements. It's a little more strict on these submission guidelines. Um, and I know that's creating a little bit of confusion because a lot of parents, a lot of athletes 
don't really know where they belong. Um, and that's where, I'll go back one page here. This comes in handy, okay? So, you know, we've given you the depiction of the pyramid. You, you can also get a feel for how small and how few athletes are actually invited to the selection camp. You can, you know, gauge, is my son, daughter, athlete anywhere near these erg times? Um, if they are, then we suggest that you do pay close attention to those special requirements for selection camp. Because even if you're unsure that they will make it, you wouldn't want them to be in a situation where, you know, they didn't submit something they needed to to be to be um, considered. Now, if you're, you know, if these times and this is sounding more like your athlete then you don't have to be as worried about these, you know, extra special and a little bit more strict um, submission requirements. I will go ahead and move on. Okay, so we're gonna transition a little bit now that hopefully you have a little bit of clarification on what the camps are. Um, so let's get into process. How do you apply for camp? Um, one thing that we try to stress in all communications is that um, camps are invite only, okay? So you don't say, oh, I'm applying only for this camp or only for that camp. What we are looking to do is create a, an athlete pool, right? A big athlete pool with the information that you're submitting to us. And then we are the ones who determine what is the best fit for you this year. Now, with that being said, there's different ways to enter that athlete pool, okay? So for, with the system this year, um, the ID camps are very important, right? <clears throat> so that is one key way to get into our athlete pool, to get in front of us. We have, through attending an ID camp, we have your registration information, which collects quite a bit of uh, data from you. But then we also have your actual results from ID camp. And then we have notes on you from the coaches at ID camp. So that's like a really pretty solid picture of an athlete, right? But we also know the US is a large country. <laughs> we are not in a place where we can offer an ID camp in every state or in every giant, you know, rowing area. So we have to provide another way for people to enter the athlete pool, which is this athlete information form. Um, we'll send it in the chat towards the end and you'll get it in a post webinar email from me. This is the form that's linked on the ODP camps website. Um, it's been sent out to the ID camp athletes as well. So again, it's just, we wanted to clarify that these are the two ways to access and enter that athlete pool. Now for our selection camp kids, just remember you're, you're kind of a, you have your special asterisk as well. So the expectation is that as a selection camp hopeful that you did or will attend an ID camp this year. It's a really important step this year. Um, where the some of the flexibility comes in is of course for medical issues, family emergencies, like we're always going to consider those things too. You know, if you are, if you're meant to be at selection camp, but you couldn't attend an ID camp, we work with you on that. Okay, oh, and as a note, this is for coxswains as well. Okay, so coxswains, we encourage you to do, attend ID camps. We've, ha we've had many, which has been great. Um, same thing applies to you if you are not able to reasonably access and attend an ID camp. The athlete information form is for you as well, and that's where we would collect your recordings um, and then also some of your like height, weight, and stuff like that. Uh, one other note on this, because we've been getting a lot of questions lately, is about a video submission of rowing. Okay, so this is another uh, requirement for that selection camp group. If you are not in that group of hopefuls, you do not have to submit rowing video to us, okay? Even if you didn't attend an ID camp. 
Um, that was kind of an extra special requirement this year for selection camp. Um, and that video, rowing video, coxswain recordings, all needs to be submitted through this information form. Okay, we can't, um, there's not enough of us to be fielding all personal submissions through email. So it's really got to come through that, that athlete form. Okay, so let's say you're in the athlete pool, whether you've attended ID camp already or you're about to, or you've submitted your information through the job form, possibly both. Uh, what's next? All right, you are going to be waiting to hear from us. There's a, a waiting period before, before the gates kind of open. Um, just to give you a little bit of perspective, our ID camp started in late January and they go all the way until the end of March. So we don't, we're not going to put ourselves in a position where we filled up all the spots before we even have completed all of the ID camps. Um, and I'll expand a little bit on that in a moment because there are scenarios where people from the same ID camp, some people will have heard from us and some people won't yet. Okay. Um, so just as a general gauge, we have four ID camps left, which will serve about well over 200 athletes. All right. So we still have quite a few people to get through. All right. So with that being said, when can I expect an invite? Um, so selection camp, that top of the pyramid, those invites will not start until mid-April, okay? And those will go about a month, um, you know, with some a little bit of flexibility in there. We did put this note on the screen in case you are somebody who was involved with selection camp in the past. This is a little bit of a change this year. So let's say you're an athlete who gets invited, but you, you're not sure you want to go, or maybe your team's going to Henley instead. If your invite is refused, it's not going to be passed on to the next best athlete. Now, I'm not saying that as a responsibility of the original recipient. It's more so for the next kids to understand that you know, there is a camp limit and it's not just going to grow exponentially. We've had a lot of flexibility in the past with camp size growing. We do not have that this year. So that's a consideration. Um, also, you know, for those that do get invites, we just highly encourage that you respect that. <laughs> you And that's a great thing. So hopefully you reply um, and get back to the coaches that, that contact you. Now for the other camps, uh, selection development camp, that's that pre-elite, uh, you know, mid-level camp. Those invitations will start in the last week of March because that is after the last ID camp has, has been run. Okay, and those, those will be on a rolling basis. March through through May, um, there's lots of follow up that goes on. Maybe you get an invite and you have questions for us. That's fine. There's a little bit of back and forth there. Now for youth development camp, um, invites have started, which is very exciting. Um, hopefully some of you on this call have received invites. Um, those have started. They will continue. OK, we do, depending on, you know, how camps are filling and how the flow is going, they will go all the way into May, okay? Um, now, this is the point I wanted to, to touch on that with the ID camp. So uh, let's take, for example, the California ID camps that happened in uh, late January. So we've already had it happen where some people got their invite to youth development camp who attended that California ID camp but the other people at that ID camp haven't heard from us yet. So a little bit of panic starts to set in, understandably. Um, but what I wanted to stress is that it doesn't mean that you're not going to get an invite. It just excuse me, means that the, pro the point of the process we are right now, we're in a little bit of a holding pattern, right? We have kids who are on the cusp of selection development and youth development, and we have to see how the future ID camps go um, before we really get back to everybody. Okay. 
Now, I think, yeah, so one more thing before we move on from this invite slide. I just wanted to note that we are well aware of the other camps out there and the pressures they put on their applicants. Um, and, you know, we are trying to be considerate of that, but we also need to stay true to two very important purposes that we have as the NGB of rowing in the US. Number one is we need to serve you guys, our members, in a manner that aligns with the Olympic Development Program. And by that, I mean, we need to make sure that we're doing our diligence to make sure the athletes are ending up where they should for their developmental stage, right? Um, and then the second important role is that we're also serving the purpose of the pipeline, the Olympic pipeline. We have to take our time to make sure the system and the stages are filled appropriately. And that plays into, you know, identifying and developing talent from the youth level onwards towards the Olympians. All right, so there's, there's a lot that goes into the invite process and it can get a little bit frustrating, I know, on the member end when you haven't heard from us yet, but hang in there. Okay, so moving on to scholarships, uh, we just wanted to, you know, put this out there and make sure that it's, it's public knowledge um, that we do offer scholarships. We, um, on the camps and the sport development team, we work closely with our community team uh, to provide scholarships for our camps. The application is posted on this ODP camps website. Um, and the so the application is there. We are looking at the first round of, of funding, um, the application deadline being April 15th. Okay, so um, you can go ahead and check that out and see, you know, what types of things are asked for on the application. So you can kind of get your ducks in a row. You are welcome to apply for a scholarship prior to receiving a camp invite. But I would say most people do wait until they've heard officially from whether it's me or the McCourts or, you know, a specific camp coach to say, hey, you're invited to fill in the blank. And then that kind of gets the wheels going of, of figuring out if you need to apply for scholarship or not. Okay, because the camps do cost um, different amounts. So um, that's up there. Go ahead and, and take a look at that ahead of time. Like I said, you can fill it out before, but it just makes a little bit more sense if, if you wait until you, you did have your invite. Okay, and then this is, you know, our best effort to, to ask you guys for a little bit of help too, right? So always keep an eye out for emails regarding camp updates or invitations. And really we're at the point where you should be looking for emails of an invite or a possible clarification on a data point or an urge score or something from us. Now, with that being said, we, we email the athlete and the guardian, um, but it is, unfortunately fairly often that our emails will land in your spam folder or your junk folder. So, you know, stay up to date with that stuff. Try to check your folders. Um, I know it's a little tricky because I just said, you're just going to be waiting to hear from us or we're in your junk folder. Um, but, you know, that's just one way to, to try to stay, stay up to date. Of course, visit the, the website. Um, that launched a couple weeks ago now, um, and that's pretty up to date. We will continue to update that with the coaching staffs. Um, that will be hopefully in the next couple of weeks. Uh, we have most of the staff set, but we I just we like to post once we have the full staff uh, ready to go. And then, as U.S. rowing, I'm assuming most of you are kind of in touch with that and the kids are a lot, uh, mostly in touch with social media. We will try to post any major updates to Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, um, 
at this point, I don't know if we'll have major updates. It might probably be more fun posts, but um, it's still a good place to to get some of your you know information and and heads up on things. So I believe that was it. Um, Chris or Sean, do you have anything you want to pop in on or anything that we missed or we can jump right into to Q and A? Well, I think we've got a good start on the questions and I, it usually what happens is as people start asking questions, it triggers a question in other people's yeah. minds. So I think if we get right into that, um, Sean, do you want to talk about your, uh, your camp at all? Or do you want to get right into questions? I mean, I can give a brief overview. Uh, well, I don't know what you guys spoke about. Sorry, I was loading a trailer to uh, try to get on the road tomorrow. Um, no, I mean, we're excited to have it. We're going to have the girls in Chattanooga, obviously a uh, different time than the guys this year. But we're excited. We have Olympians, gold medalists, um, college coaches, high school coaches. Uh, it's really exciting staff to work with these kids and kind of inspire the next generation of U.S. rowing athletes. Yeah. Sean, okay, I think, uh, I think you were starting to cut off there. Um, so uh, that's exciting, Sean. Um, yeah, you do have a lot of, what do you have, five or six Olympians coming to your camp to coach? At least. I, I lost count. Do I count my wife? I, yeah. I'll count my wife, otherwise she'll disown me. <laughs> well, she is an Olympian, you have to count her. Um, but it's pretty exciting. Caitlin's going to be there for the Coxons too, isn't that correct? Uh, she'll be here for the boys camp. Yep, cool. Uh, why don't we do this, Rosa? Ready to jump into some questions? Yeah, yeah. All right, let's do this. Um, uh, is a 5K time okay if they don't do a 2K? Okay, this has been this question has been asked a lot. Um, previously, I was I was speaking about how we're trying to make the the pathway consistent, and Yossi would like 2Ks and 6Ks, and so we're not going to have our national team um, system. You know, jump jump through different hoops because of the the variety of high school teams and clubs that we have. So the answer is, it's we would like a 6K and a 2K. If you're looking to get on to the, the national team and, and row um, in the future at any world championships or anything, any kind of uh, race that is international, Yossi is going to expect a 6K. And that's what we're going to ask for. So uh, it, it'd be easier for your coach to, on the day that he, he or she is doing the 5K, to allow the athlete to do the 6K if that's, if that's meaningful to them. Uh, next question. See here, 635 means six, uh, you pull a 635 or higher, uh, a, a time that is slower than 635 um, in the youth development category. So we don't, uh, it's not, I mean, it's not a weight adjusted thing. We don't get into weight with the kids very often. We, it's not something we'd like to do, especially at the, at the lower levels of the pyramid. Um, so uh, 635 or or slower is what we're looking for for that camp for youth development. We don't have a heavy versus a lightweight portion of camp. There's no, there's no differentiating between the athletes. I think too, this might be a good opportunity to talk a little bit about the nuances of, of erg times, um, because I, I saw they had asked like, but how much slower? Um, <clears throat> yeah. So, you know, a really important part of, of these camps is finding and working with and coaching athletes who have future potential, right? So maybe there's an athlete who is 17 years old, even 18 years old, and is, you know, really tall, long limbs, has the frame, but just started rowing two seasons ago or a season ago. So that athlete you know, some of them have fast urge scores, some of them don't, some are maybe in the sevens, but that potential is there. So that's somebody that we, we want to be working with. And that's why those ranges are a little bit broad, a little bit confusing, but we have to allow that flexibility so that we're not missing out on, on talent is really what it is. The other part of that question, Rosa, was, is there such a thing as a time that's too slow? And the, I answered it. And one of the things that I said in my answer um, was that, you know, we, we obviously want to put every athlete in a, a situation that challenges them to become better, to be better. Uh, at the same time, we have to look at the whole group and make sure that we're not going to ruin the experience of the group because somebody shouldn't be there. 
And so our job is to balance, you know, what can we do for every athlete and what can we also as a group, which is the lesson of rowing, accomplish together. And we don't want somebody to feel like they don't belong or that they can't uh, cut it or that they might impact somebody else's experience, um, you know, poorly. So, you know, is there is there a time that too slow is too slow? As Rosa was just saying, we, we take all of it into consideration and there are some things we can't teach. Uh, there are some kids who are who are switched over from different sports, from volleyball or basketball or swimming, and that are 6'6", but they really don't know how to row yet. So we have a lot of things that we have to keep in mind when uh, what Rosa said earliest was we make the decision for the athlete. The athlete doesn't tell us where they're going to go. And that's because we have to balance all those various things out to make sure that everybody's in a fulfilling or has the opportunity to be fulfilled by the end of summer. Sean, did you want to hop in? Yeah, I was just going to say, um, you know, just as someone who's been involved with um, U18, U17 uh, for a number of years, we, we've had plenty of athletes come to us, um, you know, with the season rowing over seven minutes with, you know, I have one guy um, who stood out from our, our camp last year who's, I don't know if he's quite 6'6", six, six, he's at least 6'5", you know, and this year he's going... Um, about 25 seconds faster, you know, he reached out, let me know, hey, I got this going. So I think the biggest thing for us is to recognize at this age, kids grow and change so quickly that, um, you know, we, we have to look at the whole picture. We have to look at their tape. We have to look at their height. We have to look at uh, their ERG score. But, um, you know, I always just say, Put your name in the ring, encourage, you know, encourage your athletes to apply, and then, um, yeah, we'll take it from there. Let me, let me just add on to what, what Sean just said. Uh, there's a question in here, is there, is there an age that's too young? The, the answer is actually yes, um, for a couple of reasons. One of them is, for us to work with colleges, you can't be younger than 13 and be on campus. So, I mean, that's that's out of our control right off the bat. Um, and then when we when we work with the athletes, all of our camps um, allow uh, preparation and lifting and strength and conditioning. And some of the, the colleges we're looking at, their insurance doesn't cover if an athlete is, what was it, Rosa, 15? You have to be at least 15 to be able to go into the yeah, it was, right at the under university. 15, okay. And so there are, I mean, these are yet more, uh, aspects that we have to balance out. So is there, is there um, uh, uh, too young? Yes. So under, first of all, under 13 is too young because they're not allowed on campus to stay there. Number two, um, uh, we also don't want somebody to come in that's so young that they don't know how to fit in with the older kids or that they're in scenarios or situations where the older kids are just talking and doing, talking about things and doing things different, you know, at an age that's above them. We don't want to put people in to all those awkward situations. So yes, um, there is such a thing as too young. Let's Chris, see. if you don't mind, I'll, I'm, I'll take the, the next two. Um, I really appreciate this person asking about coxswains and erg times because um, I, we have not had this before. I've never seen so many coxswains submit erg scores. So I don't know if that is reflective of coaches getting their athlete or their coxswains to work out more, which is great. And we're all for that, but um, no coxswains do not need to submit erg times for our camps. Um, but please do keep working out. That's great. <laughs> um, and so next question. So once an athlete gets invited to one camp, there is no chance that they will get invited to a higher level. Correct. This is a great question. And I actually wish we had talked about it already. Um, that's incorrect. Okay. So your initial invite received is like your entry ticket to the system. So if you get invited to a camp and you're like, oh, this really isn't the one I wanted to go to. It doesn't mean that it's over. If you in a couple of couple weeks or whatever, you end up PRing and you've got, or you raced at regionals and had tremendous results some you know your total athlete picture has changed greatly within a month or a couple of weeks we want to know about that and that's what that athlete form is for so that you can submit 
you know, updates. Um, and at that point, you could even continue communicating with the person that sent you your original invite because, you know, we're, we're all connected. We're all in communication about the athletes. So um, I, I do want you to take that as your, your invite is like your ticket into the system. You might end up staying at that level, but it does, it does not mean that you're stuck there. I don't want to sound so negative, but I, I think you, you know, well, it's an important point to make Rosa. I mean, and I think everybody, I hope that they, you all understand that we want to challenge your athlete or you, if, if it's an athlete that's listening, we want to challenge you where you're at. We, you know, we're not looking to, um, to hold anybody back. We certainly want you to, to be where you belong. We also don't want you to be in over your head so that you get frustrated and it's a bad experience. Um, so I think it's imp that's an important point to make. Yeah. Uh, next question. Yes. Um, beginning June 11th for girls starts. Well, I'm in New York and, and we don't end school for a bit in June. Um, and so just wondering, are there any thoughts to having camp a few weeks later, like the boys in future years? Yes. Uh, the answer is absolutely yes. We ran into a situation where we had done all the legwork. Uh, it's pretty hard finding a place that you can say, hey, can I bring 125 teenagers to your place? And they're like, yeah, please do. Um, uh, we thought we had two places. And one of them fell through too late for us to to go back and, and redo all that. So um, luckily for us, the the McCourts and Chattanooga, it was flexible. They were flexible enough to be able to do back to back camps and still get people home so they could race with their clubs, uh, their home teams at club nationals or summer nationals. So in the future, we hope to remove that issue. We don't hope we hope to never have that problem again. Last year, we were able to start the day after youth nationals. Uh, we didn't want to do it this year, but as fate would have it, here we are. Uh, but in the future, our intention is to have multiple options so that we don't have to have number one camps that are this big and number two, that they don't have to be back to, they can be side by side at the same time in different locations rather than uh, back to back like we, we have to do this year. Thank you for the question. Um, how much will scholarships cost? Well, uh, it, in, in, when you put in, they will have a series of questions and they will be need-based. Um, they could, for some athletes, they could cover everything. And for some athletes, they could cover a portion based on, it's relative to how many other people ask and what the need is for, for many other applicants and also what their needs are and what their ability to, uh, to pay for it is. Rosa, do you want to add anything to that? No, I think that that covers it well. Okay, a ballpark um, to cost of, of cost to attend camps. So we uh, we actually know the price. the The one month camp is uh, Rose. It's it's <laughs> now I'm second guessing myself. It's, it's the same it's as five, last year, right? Yeah, five nine nine five. Five nine nine five, and that covers you have to get there and you have to get home from the club nationals, uh, the race at the end in Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. uh, but everything in between is covered. And then, uh, that's all gear, food, housing, transportation to the race. Um, obviously, your, your, your entry fees are all part of the camp, all of that. Any, any um, activities that we would do? Uh, and I know, Sean, if you're going to do it this year, you guys went uh, river rafting and did you know, different, different activities last year. So it's all covered in the cost of the camp. Um, oh, 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 so the two-week camp, Sean, is going to be? Uh, $39.95. Okay. Is the national U19 national competition uh, team camp? Yes, junior world championships are in Paris, France this year. Fun. Yeah, and fun fact about that is um, they use the junior world championships yep. as a test event for <clears throat> the upcoming Olympic event. So every three years, you'll see junior worlds at the location where uh, the Olympics will be the next year. Yeah, we're the test, but it is kind of exciting to know that you're going to be the first ones to do it uh, before the Olympians show up. Yeah, and that's not yeah. to say there, there haven't been rowing races on that event or venue before, but. But nobody as cool as our kids. Right. Uh, if our athlete is attending an ID camp in Chicago this weekend, does she still need to send in a video? I can well, take this one. Yeah, go um, ahead. So again, it depends a little bit. Um, they certainly don't need to submit video prior to ID camp or anything like that. But if this athlete is a hopeful for selection camp, then they will uh, need to submit video through the athlete information form. If 
selection camp is not realistically in the cards, then they do not need to submit rowing video at all. You want to take the next one? Um, yeah. So when are deposits due for camps? So the way this works is once um, you get the invite, uh, the next step would be to submit your deposit to secure your camp spot. Now, we are a little bit delayed on our end, so we don't actually have that payment link out to invitees yet, but that should be coming out in the next week or two. So as far as the deposit, which is $1,500 um, for youth development camp and selection development camp, um, there's not a date on the calendar that it's due, but it is due for us to know for sure that you are coming to camp. With that being said, all balances and everything will be due in full by June 1 of this year, obviously. All right, let's continue here. Um, again, if anybody, if anything comes along and you, and you can just add it on to the questions and we'll get to it. Uh, how important are this year's youth nationals to get an invite to the selection camp? So uh, this is, I'll take this one, Rose, and you can add on to it. Um, you know, having been part of the system for quite a while, we have some phenomenal athletes who are on teams that aren't as good as the athlete's ability is. And so we don't, uh, um, an athlete isn't judged by whether or not their team does something awesome at youth nationals, or there are kids who will come to camp as selection camp and have never been to youth nationals because their team wasn't fast enough. And so I, it, how important are, are this year's youth nationals to get in, an, an invite? I mean, if you're in the single and you make it there and you, you have a good showing, well then, for you, they might be important, but in general, you can still make selection camp having never been to youth nationals at all. I hope that uh, I hope that answers the question. If not, please uh, jump in um, and ask it a different way. Can you talk more about coxswains? Uh, how coxswains are evaluated at the ID camps? Well, this there's this is a multi-part thing. Number one, we get to see coxswains in action at ID camps. We get to see who's a leader, who's not. We get to see how they. Project, uh, project themselves, present themselves, how they speak, whether the athletes respect, uh, show respect or listen or not. Um, we get to see how efficient they are. We get to see how they are, how helpful they are with the coach trying to run an ID camp with, I mean, our biggest ID camp was 161 people. The coxswains were super important to help make sure that that ran, because we don't want to waste everybody's time. So things have to happen and coxswains are the key, are the key to that. On top of all that, your coxswain tape is quite important as well. That that allows us to hear you in the boat. That allows us, whether it's a practice or a race, we get to decide, you know, we get to listen and, and decide uh, whether or not you have the skills that we think we can work with that'll that enhance the camp and enhance the experience of the people that you're going to be coxing. So I hope that, Rosa, would you like to add anything to that? I think I'll just offer a little bit from my coach's hat perspective. Um, the coxswains that make the biggest impact at ID camps. They show up prepared. They show up having read the watt testing protocol. They show up with a, you know, a notepad and a pencil ready to take down directions. Um, we do ask that if and when possible to show up with a Cox box, although we know that's not, you know, realistic for everybody. Um, some of the coxswains I've seen on the water, they take initiative if they're out, let's say with two eights, they take initiative to stay together throughout the drills so that as a coach, we can be observing all athletes at the same time. Those kind of practice management skills, um, they show through very quickly and make a big impact. Yeah, huge, huge. Okay, next. Uh, does declining a camp this year negatively impact the athlete trying out again? next year absolutely not uh, every athlete is um is an individual we all have different things going on in our lives at different time and sometimes it's not the right time um for everybody so it, absolutely the answer is no absolutely not i think the answer you can uh is that you can have a so if you're 16 and turn 61 currently 152 pounds possibly uh over seven minutes um, yeah, I would apply. I mean, <laughs> well, look, I've been 5'8 for 40 years. I wish I was 6'1. I wish, <laughs> I, heck, I wish I was 5'8 at 16. So, yeah, absolutely. Again, 6 for 1, and you're, a, you know, possibly a sophomore. Uh, of course I would. And, and ERG scores, 
everybody's different. Some teams don't have to erg at all. They row year round and they're down south and they don't erg as much. My team only did one 2K a year. I mean, as you can imagine, they weren't great. Uh, they weren't always great times. So absolutely, I would apply uh, if that is the question right there. Um, yeah, Chris, can I jump in on that? Yeah, please do, Sean. You know, the, the one thing is, you know, I keep going back to people are going to grow at different times. So we're trying to make these athletes three-dimensional in, in order to develop them. So, I mean, yes, erg time is the way that everyone is judged universally in the sport. But, you know, we're looking for someone who has that growth mindset, someone that's gritty, someone that may not be the finished product right now. I mean, that, that's the purpose of the development camp. Absolutely. Um, my daughter turns 13 in October, so I assume she will not. Unfortunately, that is um, correct. Um, she uh, legally won't be able to come and stay at the university at 12 years old. Um, who needs to do the ECG? So if you're going to selection camp, all right, so that cardio physical, that's what you're going, you're going to need to, to have that if you're going to that camp. So if you think and these aren't as easy as people think to, to get uh, scheduled. So if you think that you have a chance of going there, that's something you're going to want to look into in advance. But if you're going to um, selection development or youth development, you do not need the ECG. Hope that answers that, Catherine. Uh, what happens at the selection camp? So selection camp. The athlete shows up at selection camp. If they've been invited to selection camp, they are going to one or the other. So uh, selectors will be there. They will decide on what athletes are going into what boat. The coaches then take over and they prepare for worlds. It's it's uh it's the minute that you arrive, you're going into one or the other, Canamex or Worlds. And then yeah, you go right into the next phase, which is traveling to your respective race. Uh, what are the additional costs for worlds? Um, you're gonna have to uh, reach out to the head coach, Casey Galvanic. Uh, Rosa, would you put his email in for us? Yeah. Um, I don't actually believe the um, costs have been published yet, but they will be. And, and the way that it works is uh, you, everybody will pay the same amount to go to selection camp. And then if you are selected for the world's team, you will have to pay an additional amount. Um, I don't even really want to spitball numbers because it's been different. Um, based on the location yep. and what travel is like that year. Um, but they will be that that will be posted by the time that you would work to get an invite. Yeah, those variables are are incredible too. I mean, last year we saw airfare go through screaming through the roof, housing, all the things change. And so you're gonna want to to get the latest information, uh, you'll want to to send uh, Coach Casey an email to answer that question for you or any question in the, in that vein that happens in Chula Vista. Um, we're not able to attend. So this question is, if you're not ready for the top tier, but you're not able to attend an ID camp um, and we're not looking for video, are we just using ERG scores? So we'll use, well, so Chris, will we be using what we have available? So the more we get um, from, from the athlete, the more we'll have to base our decisions on. Are we just using ERG scores? No, we'll use metrics and height and weight and wingspan. Um, and if we uh, race results, you know, you'll, I'm assuming the athletes can put in and will put in if they have them. Um, but like we said before, it's no one thing. So the more you can give us, the easier it is for us to make a decision. And, and that's going to be relative to the group. So go ahead, Rosa. Um, we also do have or collect some of your coach contact information as well. So if if there's some people we don't feel we have a good picture on, we can always reach out to uh, your local coach as well. And today alone, I had uh, a co I had two recommendations come in from coaches about their athlete. So um, going back to coxswains, you know we have less even to work with for coxswains. So if your coaches have um, uh, something to say, you know, they can give us a, a great insight into who the, how the coxswains are at, at what they see every day in practice or in racing. How many yeah. clinics do you do? So we did 15 this year, 15 IDs, ID camps. Um, and we don't do them every season. We do them starting in January before we really get full bore into the spring season. 
So I hope that answers that question. If we wish to update our ERG times, we need to use the athlete information form. That is correct. Do we submit the generic form on the website or do we need to log into a personal page? That is a, <laughs> a more loaded question than they realize. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick my neck out a little bit here on behalf of U.S. Rowing. But in future years, the plan will be that you log into your member profile and you can update this information as often as you like and as often as you need. At any point in time, we can go in and see your updated information. We are not there yet. So for this year, it is that athlete information form that's linked all around and on the ODP website. Please submit to that as many times as, as you see fit, obviously within reason. We only wanna know when there's new information. We did have a coxswain give us 26 straight practices of uploaded uh, recording. So we're not suggesting that you do that. But if you have something that you think shows significant growth or improvement, then you should send that. Um, and we know that teenage boys can grow five inches in six months. So if you're growing like a weed, let us know. Um, how do you decide who you invite to selection camp? So um, that is outside of Rosa and my and Sean's um, purview, but it is the sum total of the athlete and whether or not uh, the coaches there, the selectors there feel the boats are going to go faster with that athlete in it. And there's a lot of metrics that they will use. And we presented a lot of them. Um, many of these kids are already known. It'll be the outliers that we've never heard of that come out of the blue who have massive ergs. And then the big, you know, I was at um, selection camp for a number of years. We had kids who came who, who had just amazing ergs, but couldn't row. It's like imagine a CrossFitter pulls a world record. They can't, they still can't row. It doesn't matter what they pull in the yard. So they will, those, those talent identifiers will make that determination who are going to be the 31 boys and 31 girls that are invited and plus three coxswains for each gender as well. So Linda, I hope that answers your question. Rosa, do you want to add to that? Just one little correction. It's six coxswains total because coxswains can now cross their yeah. gender. So it won't yep. necessarily be three boys and three girl coxswains. It's six total. Correct. Thank you for that. Uh, let's see here. How many boys apply for the youth development camp for the 125 spots? So this is interesting because I think Rosa will agree that every year up to this year, we've always had more uh, girls sign up for uh, ID camps and so on. This year, the boys um, are coming out of the woodwork. But we have to answer uh, whomever asked this question. We have 900 and between 15 and 20, 920 kids right now, give or take, that have signed up for ID camps. Uh, we have another over 300 kids who have put into the JOT form. So um, I don't know the answer off the top of my head, the exact number of kids who clicked youth development camp out of the 125 boys, you know, four boys. But uh, we, we're, we're closing in on a thousand kids have applied for the camp system now. And the slide, you know, one of the first couple of slides showed you how many seats there are total. Uh, should an athlete ask their coach for a letter of recommendation? I think so. Um, would that help with your decision process? Uh, it does help, especially if you are somebody who doesn't feel strongly that your erg is amazing or, I mean, if you're a, if you have other attributes that make you a great teammate or make you somebody who is a plus to have in the boathouse, absolutely. I, and I would imagine if your coach agrees with you, they're going to want to write you that letter of recommendation. So no worries, Allison. Um, I don't think we did answer that before. Resubmitting information. Do we resubmit everything or just the new items? Rosa? Yeah, so there are some fields on the form that are required, so you will need to fill those in every time. But let's say you just have a new 2K score. You can do the required fields and then that new 2K score and leave the rest blank. Um, we have all of your records that you're submitting and we're not deleting them. So we we still have your, your previous athlete picture. Um, I, I would say a little bit of a tip, if you go ahead and allow, you know, that autofill function, that'll probably save you some time because I know it is pretty tedious to, to enter all that required information again. Question about coxswains. Uh, would you recommend for a coxswain to display leadership and practice management skills after the ID camps? So at ID camps, it's the opportune time, right? You get to display who you are, the coach right there. Afterwards, we're not going to see you. We're only going to see what you put in on paper. 
that might be a good place for your coach to step in and and tell you know write us and tell us what they see in you on a daily basis because we're not going to be able to see you. And the other thing um, about that would you asked specifically about leadership and practice management. That will be where your coach is going to come in and help. If it's about you on the water, then you're going to send in tapes to to satisfy that. Okay. If my son and daughter get selected, Sean, you're going to have to help with this. I think for any of the levels sure. of camp, can parents visit during your stay? So I am going to tentatively say yes, because we do at all levels of camp have a day off or a half a day off, but you're going to have to do it. You're going to want to do it, I would hope, when the athlete has the afternoon off or Sunday off or so on, because you're not going to want to disrupt their opportunities uh, you know, every day at camp, especially the higher the camp goes. You know, those practices are super important. But yes, I mean, it's not a, you know, it's not a camp where it's on lockdown and you don't get to see your kids. Um, uh, so the answer is tentatively yes, depending on the scenario, how long you're staying and how long you're taking. And then we get into other situations like invariably, in my experience, and Sean, you can say in a sec, um, your parents show up to take you out to dinner and you're like, hey, can I take all my roommates too? And now we're faced with, do we put the roommates with people that we've just met and what were their parents thinking. So it gets more complicated than you might think. Sean, you want to add in anything to that? No, I mean, I think it's fine. I mean, Chattanooga is the scenic city. So we've always had parents come and visit, um, you know, but I, I think too, we have to strike that healthy balance of having an athlete connect with their, you know, their friends or the, these new, this new group of friends versus, Hey, I'm going to go to dinner every night with my parents. So there's that also team building social aspect that we just want to balance. I mean, obviously, um, come, come visit, um, but, you know, just know that we just have to, we, we have to strike that balance at some point. Ooh, uh, here's a question, Rosa. Do you know how many Coxons have applied for camps this year? I know we have a lot. Um, out of the... Uh, 920 or so i don't have an answer i don't know exactly we, we have quite a few but i don't know yeah. you know separate them out but i i don't know and and also when they click you know which camp are you interested in i mean i really uh and we have yeah we have a good it's not to dissuade anybody from still applying you know we, of course. we, we want to hear about you because you could be better than the 40 others you know so we want to know. Is there a minimum height for girls to be considered for camp? I'm hearing a lot about height and promise. I hear you. I'm short. I get it. Um, I don't think there's a minimum height. I mean, you know, look, you know, I remember Christine Cavallo. She was like five foot three and she mm -hmm. you know, broke seven as a lightweight. So uh, is there a minimum height? You know, again, I'm not knowing who's writing this question. So, um, but I would say my, my tentative answer is is no, there's not a minimum. I've seen some great rowers that are short and done a, a phenomenal job. Rosa, you want to add to that? Um, I mean, uh, personally, I was not tall either, but I got a shot at a sculling development camp when I was, you know, in, in high school and it it helped change my path. So I would just encourage everybody to to put their name in the ring. That might've been the coolest uh, summer camp of all time, if I remember correctly. Oh, well, actually, Megan McCourt was there as well. She Megan was, McCourt was coaching it and I was running it. Yeah, that was back in, oh, was wow. it like 2005? Sure how old we are. Oh, okay. Um, uh, if you intend an ID camp in person, is it still required you submit a video? And what is the ideal max uh, Watts score? So the question about the video is, again, pertains to the level of camp that you're trying to make. If you're trying to go to selection camp, then you're going to want to put in the video uh, regardless. Um, I mean, there's, there, there are so few slots, so you're going to want to send them everything that you can to make a case for yourself. Uh, ideal Max Watts, that's a heck of a question. I, I mean. Yeah, we, I, I've got this one a few <clears> times. <throat> um, the answer is no, uh, because Max Watts, the nature of the test, it is so short that it's, um, especially for youth athletes, it's not terribly reflective of even what you would do on a 2K, but it is reflective of your future potential. And, you know, we they chose to run the max watts for a couple reasons. One is that potential, future potential aspect. 
um, because over an athlete's career, max watts don't actually change by huge amounts, right? You'll see 25 second drops on 2Ks and 10 seconds and five seconds as you get faster. Your max watts don't swing that much, right? Now, the little asterisk, because we're dealing with youth athletes, of course, theirs will improve quite a bit. But the other element to the max watt testing is that it facilitates, it allows us to run an ID camp for 161 kids in, in one day. Um, now, actually, the U23 and the senior levels have now adopted the same watt testing protocol. So that's pretty cool to see and also plays into how we're trying to tie all levels of the system together. You know, additionally, it doesn't mess with your team's training program and timing of it so that, you know, like you don't feel pressure to do multiple 2Ks one after the other because you want to do one for us and you want to do one for your team and then, you know, and so on. Um, uh, thank you for that, Rosa. Uh, so we have no more questions. Uh, this is your last chance if you have any questions you'd like to throw at us. Otherwise, uh, we thank you very much for joining us and send along if something should come up later at a later date and you want to drop us an email, please do. Oh, hold on. As soon as I said that, see? Oh, no. Oh, we're just, oh no. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you all for uh, for yeah, joining us. And if you do have questions, let us know. We'll be here to to answer them. And we look forward to seeing you out there.